how to create optical art, weird and unusual line designs like this in Photoshop. Photoshop CC220, 219, 218, etc. Slightly different with 218, 219 because the pattern designs were available. With 220, there is an additional step that you may need to do. So I'm just going to go through that. So you can create all these, and all this is just one layer. Now it could be multiple layers with multiple different warps. But I'll show you how, and also how you can approach it to create different warps and different designs. So first thing to do, I'm just going to get rid of that. And I'm going to use brush textures in this. I could use fills, I could use patterns and layers, but I'm going to use brush textures. Brush textures are really useful for lots of other things. So I'm just going to give you an example. Now just go to the brush tool, and there's the brush tool there. And I'm using a very basic brush. And now with this window and brush settings, is a brush settings. Now shape dynamics doesn't have to be on, turn that off, that's just the, my default. But the key thing here is texture. So texture. And I'm going to use this pattern. And the reason that's why I mentioned about the 220 with CC220, they changed everything. So the patterns are slightly different now. So patterns here. And there's this folder structure. And what you'll need is the legacy patterns and more. That's where those that pattern is, that line pattern. So to get that, what you need to do is you need, whoops, don't want that. It's always trouble sometimes. Just joins with that. I don't want that. You end up with loads and loads of different things. Right, now I've got that. Patterns, right side menu and go down to legacy patterns and more. Yeah, whenever you want to do, whenever you move panels around, it always decides to stick together and you think, no, I didn't want that. Because then something like that fills half the screen, which is fine if you're used to using it. But if you're doing a tutorial, it makes it slightly more awkward. Anyway, legacy patterns, you want to click that. When you do that, you'll get all your legacy patterns back. And these are the ones that are in 219, etc. cetera. So I'm going to move that away now. I could join over that one with the brushes, etc. But I don't want that. So brushes, texture, and go down to web patterns and go to this one, black and white. Now you could also create this pattern if you haven't got it. Very simple, just simply use maybe like a shape tool. Just go to rectangle and then just create a very basic black and white line. And that will be your pattern. It's already there, so I'm going to be using that. Now this is the reason why I like brush textures, because brush textures, you can change the scale. So with that selected, and I'm using black, it doesn't have to add, you could use red. You could, see that's another thing that's quite useful. So you can say go to green, and then you can just apply, and so you can see, you would, it'd be hard to do that with layers. So with brush textures, you can create these lovely combination lines. Let's get rid of that. So put it back to black. You can mix them, red, green, blue, etc. Just create whole loads of different colored lines. So, scale. So you can change the scale. And apply that. Or make it thinner. Like that. Or maybe make it variable. Just so you can put, add different size in between. And so on and so on. So that's quite useful. But I'm going to go with about 170. So 170, and I'm going to fill this whole thing. So you can also change the contrast. Great thing with this is you've got a preview down here, which is really useful. So you've got preview, so you can mod modify the contrast, you modify the brightness, and they do obviously vary slightly. So you can, I would say about there, that's reasonable. And the key thing is texture each tip and height. Make certain you've got some heights. Depth, I should say. You've got no depth, it won't work. So if you put it to zero, apply it, nothing will happen. You need some depth. So once you've got that, and I'm using 3% for something to work best. So 3% and just apply it across here. And you can fill the whole layer if you want. And of course, like I say, if you varied the size, maybe you went for a 2000 by 2000 brush, it would be quicker. But then it would fill the whole document instantaneously and you might want to vary the size now it's not perfect you can see actually what happens when you apply over apply it a couple of times that you end up with these 
I'm not worried about that. Actually, I quite like having a bit of imperfection in, in there. So there are the settings for that. You can obviously, a bit of trial and error, you can probably work out your own settings, change the scale, etc. So move that out of the way now. So I've got my design there. What I want to do now is I want to unlock that layer. So layers, so there's the layers, and there's a little obviously there. Just click that. So now the layer is unlocked. Just notice that it's not, doesn't look, no, it's not 100% black. It just looks, I can see it's slightly got a red. I want it black, but it doesn't matter. Okay. You could do this exactly the same with different colors, green, blue, maybe create a multicolored different warped design, but for just as reasonable. But before you do anything else, now what you can do, you can do layer and go down to smart objects, convert to smart object. And the reason for that is that you can then use the source, change it in multiple ways, and then always go back to it later if you want to do that. So you can see your layer now, it's a smart object. Then you can go to edit and transform and warp. And you can warp it. And just go to that there. And if you don't, if you can't warp it, it will always sort of indicate, it says boom, and it will suddenly hear a noise saying, nope, I can't do it. Like that. Yeah, it's busy. You got to see, if you try that area, try and warp it, it will not let you. And you can still warp it obviously internally, but it just moves the whole lot, which is fine. You might you can warp it out over the top. Up to you what you want a great design. And you can choose anywhere to warp it. It doesn't have to be around the edge, it doesn't have to be using these. You can warp it in the center as well. But what you can also do is you can add some more control points. So you can add split warp crosswise. That's right click. So right click and then click on the document. And then you can add some additional. Now you can distort it so far. If you distort it too much, if you say you've got massive distortion, you'll end up maybe the result doesn't look so good. So it's probably best just a little bit of distortion. Then right click and crosswise. And you can distort it there. Just maybe a very localized distort. Right click. And you can distort that. And you can keep working, obviously, and distort it in numerous, numerous ways. Again, right click and crosswise. And you can walk there. And you can always go back at any time and remove these. This is the thing about the smart object. It's editable at any point. Right, so you've got your design there. I'm not, I could, spe could spend ages doing this. I don't want to. So you've got your design there. Press return. So there you've got your warped design. What you can then do is hold down the alter option key and duplicate. That's using the move tool there, move tool. So I'm gonna duplicate that. And you can also hold it down there. Now I could create multiple layers. And now of course, since it's a smart object and the warp is applied to this, what I can do of course, is I can go to edit and transform and warp and you can see the warp is still available. So I can actually, if I want to, create a different warp. I can warp that, warp it there. So you've got a different warp design than the ones below. Up to you. You don't have to do that. You can just, and you can also add additional crosswise. So sometimes a preview doesn't always respond immediately, but uh, it's, uh, resources on the machine press return and then you can continue with that one if you don't that one. and also what you can do of course you can also use edit and transform maybe scale scale it don't have to uh, keep it the same scale as before you can see your design there and you can rotate it as well just rotate that around press return and you can see your design there Hold down the alter option key. And you can always go back to one of the earlier layers and use those. So I'm just using this one on top, but you can always go and select. And you can see you can create all kinds of abstract designs there. Again, you can scale it and continue to maybe increase the size there. 
press return. Now what are you can do? Well, it's a layer. It's a standard layer. Obviously, it's a smart object, but it's still a layer. What you can do, you can go to layer and layer style and drop shadow. You can see, press return. You've got your drop shadow now. Now I can see some uh, area over there. Let's, you can see the background. You've got that design there. And of course, you can always repeat this over and over again and remove layers if you don't want or like the result. And of course, it's live effect still, so you can always go to layer, layer style, drop shadow, still it. You can modify it. If you want to change it, turn around and think, we well, you know what? I want it darker there. Or maybe I want a different contour. Maybe create different effects for your shadow. Don't have to. You can change your angle, obviously. I'm trying to keep it all that direction. You can modify other things, click OK. And there you have it, layer menu and flatten image. But if you don't want to do that, of course, you can always modify the source material simply by double clicking on that design there, that smart object in the layer there. But I'm gonna to go to layer and flatten image. And there you have it, a nice walk design using brush textures and a simple line pattern to create this sort of design. Hope you found this tutorial of interest. Please subscribe to Graphic Extra channel. Always any new tutorials about Photoshop, Finity Photo, Finity Designer, Painter, Illustrator, and many other things of Creative Cloud. Please add some comments, always appreciate it. It'd be nice to hear what I'm doing right, what I'm doing wrong, it's always great. Also, a dislike or like. Thank you much.